Welcome to the micro engineering course. Today we will see the concept of a uniform plane view. As we have seen earlier that a micro is a small view. Now how your view is propagating in a space and how the same view is propagating in a view guide that is a transmission line as a view guide here. That we are using view guide as a transmission line in a micro. Now to understand the concept of a waveform, how you wave is transmitted in a space, and what is the nature of that wave? So we will see some basic of the wave first, and then we proceed to the how that radiation takes place from the antenna. That concept. Now, you people know that the Maxwell's equation earlier. Now we talk about that Maxwell equation that is about a del cross H is equal to minus dou B bar by dou T. This one is about a Maxwell equation. Sorry, that is about if we say that H, it is E. This is about a del cross E. Then a del cross H is equal to your displacement current density and a conduction current density that is JC and JD you will write here dou d by dou t now this both these are the vector that is about a conduction current density and the displacement current density now del cross e if you see that this one is nothing but a coulomb's law and this one is nothing but the ampere circuit law. Now this one is the Maxwell's equation we have written here. And again, two more Maxwell's equation. That is one is about a del dot d bar is equal to your rho here and del dot b bar is equal to zero. Now these are the four Maxwell's equations. Now we can write this equation in the form of a phasor here. So in that case, that dou by dou t term that can be reduced to j omega there. And then we can relate the equations of del cross e in terms of that phasor form. So if we write the equation in the terms of a phasor form, our equation becomes equation del cross h and del cross e. Here it is nothing but what? minus j omega b is, b is equal to what mu h that's why we can say that a mu h here and this one if you see that this is about a what a sigma e here plus what is about dou by dou t that is about a j omega that is epsilon e now this del cross h we can write del cross e we can write that is in terms of phasor in which we can say that we will replace here that is a dou by dou t term with respect to the j omega here. That is a, a phasor notation that we can write. Now from this wave equation, from, sorry, from this Maxwell's equation, we can obtain that a wave equation here. So to understand the wave equation, we should know first what is the rule of these equations here. If you see that this is expressed in terms of electric field, magnetic field, intensity here. This one is about a flux density, electric flux density and this one is a magnetic flux density. We can write in terms of a electric field intensity also. In this case, we just say that D is equal to epsilon E and P is equal to mu H. So we can write this equation in terms of a constant that epsilon is a constant e is zero electric intensity and mu is a constant and h is a magnetic field intensity and this is about your volume charge density rho v is volume charge density and this jc that is a conduction current density that is in terms of the sigma e we have written and this here this dot by dot e that is nothing but a displacement current density and that displacement current density, we just say that it is independent of a, a field here. 
now this del operator if we say that a del operator can be written in a a cartesian coordinate we can write in a spherical coordinate we can write in a cylindrical coordinate and this is nothing but a vector one it can be written here ax unit vector plus do y do y a by unit vector plus do y do z a z is so this one in the a cartesian part similarly we can write in a cylindrical as a, a spherical coordinate system now consider these equations and we need to obtain that what is the wave equation so to obtain the wave equation we will just consider the phasor form of a equation and then we will obtain the wave equation we just write this del cross e here and then we will say that del cross e is equal to what minus j omega mu h vector and a del cross h is equal to sigma plus j omega epsilon that is about the okay we just take a common so these are about the two equations and then other equations we say that del dot d so you can write here we'll write in terms of a del dot d is equal to rho v that is a volume charge volume okay current density here okay volume charge current density and in case of a free space that rho v becomes a zero okay so we say that condition is about this rho v will be zero if it is a a free space so we directly write here we just consider that del dot rho v the del dot d is equal to rho v in terms of that del dot d is equal to zero <coughs> that is in a, a free space now next we consider the equation here that del dot d del dot b is equal to that is a now these are the final equation now to obtain the wave equation we need to consider this all these four equations and that equations we say that we have replaced that do by do t in terms of a j omega term and now we are getting this equations maxwell's equations in a frequency domain okay now these are nothing but a frequency domain so we consider the any of the maxwell's equation and to obtain the wave equation so we consider that del cross a del cross of e here that is the first maxwell's equation we consider del cross of minus j omega so we will take that del cross of del cross e is equal to we can consider that minus j omega mu and here we have the del cross of a h now this del cross of h is nothing but what sigma plus j omega we will write here a sigma plus j omega f not and if we consider here so this becomes what minus j omega mu sigma plus j omega up that is the point it up now this the del cross del cross e if we use a vector rule or vector identity rule so in that case del cross of del cross e is nothing but what it is nothing but a minus del square e plus del of del dot e okay now this one now this one is minus del square e plus del of del dot e now this term as we say that it is nothing but a zero because del dot d is equal to zero we earlier mentioned that del dot d is equal to zero so d is equal to epsilon e so that's why del dot e is equal to zero so this term becomes a zero now we have only this term is replaced that is nothing but is zero so we have only the one term that is a minus del square e is equal to this one so minus minus get cancel this one we get cancel so our equation becomes what 
del square e is equal to j omega mu in bracket sigma plus j omega epsilon e okay i forgot it okay so now del square e is equal to j omega mu sigma plus j omega epsilon e so this term is nothing but what a propagation constant of a medium this one is called as a propagation constant of a medium and this whole term is nothing but what a sigma square sorry you can say that we have a gamma square term okay so we can say that that is about nothing but you can say a phase constant so gamma square this one we can write here the conductivity sigma okay so gamma square so this one is nothing but a propagation constant and we can relate that propagation constant here that is a gamma we can say that we have j omega mu in bracket sigma plus j omega epsilon whole term is about the under root here and this becomes what the alpha plus j beta this becomes what the alpha plus j beta now alpha is nothing but what the attenuation constant and a beta is nothing but what a phase constant alpha that attenuation constant in a meter we just mentioned major okay that is about neighbor square meter and this beta is nothing but a phase constant that is in a radian square meter so this one is about a propagation constant now your wave is propagating in a space it has some attenuation it, it has a phase constant so this one is a wave equation we have written in terms of a what we can say that electric field and this complete term is nothing but a gamma square so we can write this of that gamma square so this one is about what a wave equation we say here vectorial now okay so this del square e is nothing but a gamma square e is equal to del square e means del square e is equal to gamma square e that is nothing but a wave equation in terms of electric field so similarly we can write the wave equation in terms of magnetic field we can say that del square h is equal to we can say simply directly we can write a gamma square that is about the wave equation in terms of a magnetic field now that del square del square earlier we say that a del is nothing but a vector quantity so if in terms of a del square that becomes what we can write a expression there of a del in terms of a cartesian coordinate so these are about the two wave equation and using these two wave equations that wave how your wave is propagating in a space that we can understand okay so now i'll just uh, consider these two equations again okay so i'll write here the equation first equation we obtain that del square e is equal to gamma square e del square h is equal to gamma square h both are the vector and we say that a del is a vector operator that is a do by do x a x unit vector do by do y a y unit vector do by do z a z unit vector now del square is nothing but what a multiplication of what we can say that del dot of del is nothing but a del square so if we take a dot of this so that del square is nothing but what do square do x square do square do y square do square a 
dull state. That is about the fact. Now we can use this dull to dull square, but we can say that operator, okay, do and dull. Okay, we can write the expressions of the electric field and magnetic field in terms of this. Then we will get that relation of a wave and their component here. So we just consider that electric field wave equation in terms of electric field intensity, this one. And now we write that del square is nothing but what? We say that it is about a rho square by rho x square. This one is about your E here. Plus rho square by rho y square. This is about E here. Okay. You can say that in a vector form. Okay. Then rho square by E. Present. Right now, we just forget about that vectoral quantity. We will just consider later. And then this one is about a gamma square E. Now, what is the direction of that electric field intensity component? How your wave is propagating in space? So, we consider here the uniform plane wave, as we mentioned. So your wave is propagating in a space, it has the electric field component, it has the magnetic field component. This one is about a direction. We can suppose to say that your wave is propagating in a third direction. And we suppose to be say that this one is about x direction and this one is about a y direction. Now your electric field component is propagating. We consider that this one is about your electric field component. We can say that this one is about your electric field component here. And these electric field components are in the x direction. And your wave is propagating in the z direction. This is about the direction of a wave. It is propagating in a z direction. Now for the magnetic field intensity, this one is about your y direction. This one is about the magnetic field intensity proper. Okay. We can say that your wave is propagating and these are about your magnetic field form. This one. Now here, if you consider that your electric field component is per here, this direction. So that's why we can say that this one is about a, your electric field component in the x. That is in the x direction. This one is about a magnetic field component that is in a y direction. So h y. So you can write here the equations here. We say that electric field, generally we write that E is nothing but what? X, Y and a Z. We can say that electric field has X component, Y component or Z component. Or in terms of a unit vector, we say that field 1, unit vector, we can say that A, X, A, Y, A, Z. The electric field, compo electric field has a X component, Y component or a Z component. Now from this, if we consider that, this equation, wave equation, del square is equal to gamma square. And from this, if you say that it has a x component, your field has a x component. So now I just consider electric field has a ex component. So now I say that ex. Now then, from this equation of a electric field intensity, so which Field component is propagating in a space. Okay. So now, what we observe here, your wave is propagating in a z direction. This one is about wave is propagating in a z direction. Your electric field component is along with the x direction, but that electric field component is varies when it is propagating with the z direction. So that we can say that the 
2 square ex by 2 x square, 2 square ex by 2 y square, 2 square ex by 2 z square. That is, a, we replace that, we write here in terms of a del square. So now from this we can say that the wave is propagating in a z direction. So that's why these two terms are zero. Only we have dou square ex by dou z square because wave has the electrical component in the x direction and that x component is varying with a radius because wave is propagating this z direction. So that's why we have only the this component dou square ex by dou z square. So it is in a wave equation. And other component we say that are zero. Similarly, we can say that a magnetic field component, we have only HY, so HX and that FZ becomes a zero. Okay. So I just supposed to be write the equation in terms of a magnetic field intensity. We can say that dou square HX, sorry, it is Y now. Dou square h y by do x square dou square h y by do y square do square h y by do j. Now what happened here? Because your wave, if we say that we have written that in terms of a magnetic field density here, I'm just forget about the spectrum. It will be very easy to understand. Okay. So this one is what? This one is what? A del square h is equal to gamma square h. This one is equal to what we can say? Gamma square. Now here, your electric wave is propagating in a z direction. It has a magnetic field component in a y direction. Okay, magnetic field. So that's why h y. Okay, so that's why h y. We have written the H and now that Y component is varying with the Z. So from this we can say that this component becomes zero, this component becomes zero. So only we have what del square H Y by dou Z square is equal to gamma square H. Okay, that is about the equation. From the wave equation, we'll get this because your wave is propagating in a Z direction. This variation of the electric field component or a variation of the magnetic field component with a z direction. So that's why only in the case of the electric field component, it has a x, ex, we say with respect to z, and here we say that h y with respect to z. So that is about your wave equation. We can say that, and from this, from this equation, if you put that values of this propagation constant for the different different medium and we will get the component of electric field and a component of a, a magnetic field. We will get directly the component of electric field and a component of a magnetic field. Now we just take an example of a wave propagating in a free space and then what happened to the field component. Because generally we should know that what is the direction, z direction. So always this wave is propagating in a z direction. So we can simply write the expression here for the electric field intensity because we can say that we have the variation of field in the direction in the x direction. So we can say that E x is equal to what? E0 that is about the amplitude e raised to what j omega t minus beta z okay this one is about the component here we say that alpha is equal to zero condition is that gamma is equal to what alpha plus j beta now here we say that we have this term that uh, we can say that alpha that alternation is zero because 
Wave is not attenuated. Okay, no loss. Wave is propagating the it has no loss. In that case, alpha is equal to zero. Otherwise, there is one more term that is the alpha is zero. Okay, so right now we consider that it is about e x is equal to what e zero, and this is e j omega t term. That is because wave is written in terms of a frequency form or a phasor form. That's why because we say that a do by do t is to be replaced by j omega. So for this, this term will come, and this minus beta z minus term is what wave it is in propagating in the forward direction and in the z direction. Wave is propagating in the forward direction. But here we z is what it is in a z direction. If if there is a plus sign here, in that case we say that wave is propagating in a backward direction, opposite direction. Minus forward direction plus sign backward direction. Okay, so that is about a sign notation if we have to use always. Now that beta is nothing but a propagation constant, and where we say that it is propagating in a z direction. Now consider that. What are the intensities, or we can say that wave? If we consider that wave is propagating in a free space, so what will be the impedance in a free space? Okay. Now we can say that. Del cross E here, vector del cross E is equal to minus y omega mu zero h. It is we suppose to be considered in a free space. So in that case, conductivity that sigma is equal to zero. Okay, that sigma is zero and rho is equal to zero. Del cross E is equal to minus dou b bar by dou t. Dou b is nothing but what j omega. Okay, dou by dou t. Is nothing but j omega. B is nothing but a mu h. Okay, so we can say that mu zero h. And we earlier say that electric field component has a x value. If we write in terms of a notation del cross e, if we take a curl of this, and I'll just write directly here, do e x. By dou z because it is varying with a z direction is equal to what minus j omega mu zero this is equal to what a h y okay because magnetic field is in a y direction so simply we can solve these equations and substitute with a differentiation dou by dou z here okay so that is about what we can say that dou by z dou z differentiation with respect to z So we can just say that that is with respect to what is the omega here. Okay. So we can say that this quantity from this earlier we say that e x is equal to what e zero e raised to the omega t minus beta z or We can write here this equation there, and from this, if we take a derivative with respect to z, okay, if we take a derivative with respect to z, in that case, what happen here? We 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 have the equations of what this one e zero here that will come. Okay, so this one we take a derivative of this, and from this we directly write the equations. In terms of what a electric field and a, in terms of a a magnetic field. So we can write the equation h y is equal to what under root of a mu zero. Sorry, f null zero by mu zero with respect to the e x. Now how this term comes? Okay, if we take a differentiation with respect to z here, and uh, if we substitute that, we'll get this equation. 
case we we will get that the ratio or we'll get that the eh, equation in terms of a eh, electric field at a magnetic field okay so we have we need to talk take the differentiation that is about a eh, a direct field. so now this epsilon zero by mu zero if you talk about the ratio you can say that ex by h by is equal to what mu zero by epsilon zero is equal to intrinsic impedance that is in a free space is equal to what the 377 ohm that is about the intrinsic impedance of a free space or we can say that 120 pi that is about the intrinsic and this one is used to write the wave equations for the different or electric field and magnetic field equations for the different different medium how your wave is propagating in a different different medium so right now this one is for the free space and we got this equation because your wave is propagating in a free space way. okay yes next we talk about that wave is propagating in a different different medium okay so we can say that uniform plane wave wave i i right now we say that wave is propagating in a free space so we have the different different mediums and the different different mediums have the medium variation in the medium constant so what are the medium constants so sigma conductivity conductivity varies if medium changes for the free space zero we say but for this conducting medium whether it is a pure or impure conductivity then in that case it can vary from the zero to infinity that is about the conductor then we have the epsilon epsilon is equal to what epsilon zero epsilon r this epsilon zero is a constant 8.854 is tends for minus 12 that we say but this epsilon r is varying with respect to the different material so what are those different material and how your wave is propagating in a space or it is propagating in the different medium so what will be the relation so generally we say that for air it is a one it is not air uh, for one but it generally it is a 0.99 something so generally we have consider it is approximately one but it varies with a different material okay so, uh, that is optional cost okay permit then permeability mu is equal to what mu zero mu r so now mu and mu zero we can say that mu zero is nothing but again it is a constant but a mu r it is different here it is again depending upon the bit similarly here epsilon zero mu zero both are constant mu r and epsilon r these are varying based on the medium relative permittivity and relative permeability that is depending upon the medium now these are the medium constant sigma mu and epsilon these are the medium constant if we say that our medium is a free space then medium constant changes now if you say that it is a pure conductor then this may be changes so we consider that a different medium free space medium okay so that already we have seen that for a free space wave equation is equal to what okay we can even we can obtain that wave equation for this different medium directly and we say that a lossless medium okay lossless medium so we can say that a lossless medium is nothing but what is a perfect dielectric medium okay perfect dielectric medium so in that case 
that sigma that for this particular perfect dielectric medium that is a zero means wood no conductivity okay perfect dielectric medium that is the wood so then we have a good conductor or we can say that perfect conductor okay so in that case we can say that the conductivity that will be very very greater sorry conductivity is very very greater than the or we can say that infinite if we take a ratio of this epsilon and omega here so it will be very very greater and another medium we can consider that a lossy medium if it is a lossy medium so in that case that conductivity that for this lossy medium is not equal to zero all these relations or all these equations we relate with this conductivity or or we can say that in terms of a medium cost we talk about everything we will talk about that medium cost how your wave is propagating in a space and all that that is about we can talk about generally we say that for a free space constant it is about a 377 ohm that intrinsic impedance But for the law this dielectric medium if we calculate that eta is equal to what under root me of stop okay right that is intrinsic impedance is nothing but what under root me by of stop so for this given medium what will be happen to the vr and of stop or by according that intrinsic impedance will be changes for the different medium for a good conductor for lossy medium or for all the medium so it will be changed so you just remember that what happened to the factors of mu epsilon r and all these factors and we can obtain that a wave is propagating in a free space and what will be the intrinsic impedance of this particular wave equation so for that purpose we should know that what are the wave equations and uh, that wave equation i just write here again we say that a del square e we say that a gamma square since of that we can write q omega mu sigma plus q omega epsilon e here and a del square h is equal to q omega mu in bracket sigma plus Q omega epsilon. Okay, so now this one is about the equation. Now, according to this different medium, we say sigma varying, or that sigma term will be changes. So we just use that equations that sigma zero or sigma infinite. According to that, we can find out the wave equations, and we will find out that. A intrinsic impedance that is eta is equal to what mu by epsilon. And similarly, we can find out that another constant that is about propagation constant gamma is equal to what alpha plus j beta. So what will be the attenuation? Whether if it is a pure conductor or a what which medium your wave is propagating. So according to that. we can calculate that or we can obtain that these are the medium constant for this given medium okay so that is about what we can say that uniform plane wave it is propagating in a free space and so for this particular uniform plane wave so we can relate these equations and uh, if you see that for this wave is propagating in a free space and generally we say that it is a good conductor lossy medium or lossless medium or whichever the medium we supposed to be consider that so according to that we will get that a wave equation wave is propagating in that particular medium and this is useful to understand the nature of wave which is propagating in a free space 
to uniform state that is required because our aim is about to talk about that wave is propagating in the rectangular wave guide for the given rectangular wave guide so how your wave is propagating in a free space and that is to be defined or that is to be explained by this different medium so characteristics of a wave okay what are the various characteristics of wave and that we are getting through this different mediums okay so now we say that a lossless medium or a lossless dielectric okay or you can say that a lossy medium so what happened to this lossy medium so this one we just relate with a conductivity constant and we obtain this equation i'll just write the equations for the impedance that uh, sorry we can say that equations there and uh, we will just okay see that okay next about uh, we can write the equations of this uh, all uh, that wave equations there or we can say that alpha beta or that is related to what we can say that propagation constant and we can say that what will be the intrinsic impedance that is we can say that a mu by f so one more term is important here that is about the pointing vector for the pointing vector just we say that p is equal to what e cross h that is about your your pointing vector and from this pointing vector we just relate that what is the nature of this component okay we, we can write in terms of electric field vector or a magnetic field vector so this is about a pointing vector we say e bar cross h bar and if i write directly the equations of a pointing vector here so it is nothing but what a del of del dot of e cross h sorry i'll just instead of uh, i'll uh, write in terms of a integral form so that will be easier to you to understand that sorry integral form del dot of e cross h dv that is volume here we can say that in a given region is equal to we can say that e cross h into ds okay and that both the terms is are equal to what minus do by do t here the volume here 1 by 2 epsilon e square plus 1 by 2 mu h square see here okay that is a dv minus integral of v sigma e square now this pointing vector say that energy stored in electric field energy stored in the magnetic field and this is about a a loss or a dissipation phase. that is about your pointing vector related to that electric field and a magnetic field vector concept there. so that is about this we consider that for this this different term if you say that this is a pointing vector related to that given volume or given region okay for this given region dot ds okay and that is equal to that energy stored in a electric field and a magnetic field and this one is about your power dissipation okay that is about your pointing vector so that's all about a uniform plane wave and if you have any questions or anything else you can ask thank you all